This is like my fourth time lucky. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Helen, if it's your first time here. I'm a yoga teacher based in East London and I've been teaching for nearly three years full time. I wanted to make this video because I get quite a lot of questions on Instagram and email on how to become a full-time yoga teacher. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only way or the best way necessarily, it's just the way I did it. It's a way, not necessarily the way. I've actually done quite a few videos on how to make money as a yoga teacher, my yoga journey, so more about my yoga practice. And then my first ever vlog on here, I think is life is called Life as a Full-Time Yogi. So if you wanna see that, I'll link them all down below. I've also done a short 10 minute video on IGTV on my Instagram at HMF Yoga, answering questions like this, where I go a little bit more into detail about certain questions that new yoga teachers or yoga teachers in general might have. For this first half of the video, I'll talk about my story, my transitioning, and then I've got a random list of tips on my phone, which might be insightful for people thinking of making the plunge into self-employed full-time yoga teaching. So I'll start with my last job. My last job was a one year contract at a UK brand. I worked in digital content, covering for a lady that was on maternity leave. And about two, three months before that contract ended, I started to save up money because I didn't know what was gonna happen at the end of that year. When I accepted that job, I'd actually just started my yoga teacher training with Yoga London, and they do a course over a year, which was perfect for me. So when my contract ended, I would almost be qualified. Towards the end of that contract, Rich and I started to look for studio space. He'd always wanted a photography studio, and yoga and photography kind of need the same amount of space to be able to work. And on the spur of a moment, we signed a lease on a studio in Bethnal Green. So I hadn't left my job at this point and the pressure was on to pay like the rent and bills on this place. Got to like two weeks before, or maybe even a week before, I was due to leave this job and I said to my manager, what's gonna happen at the end? He came back to me and said, we'd love to offer you a permanent role. I said, great, because I'm thinking I need to pay for the studio, but I would like to be paid this much. I, you know, I didn't increase my salary by loads. It was literally like a few thousand pounds. I wasn't taking the piss. And they came back and said, no. They didn't even come back with a counter offer. So I said, okay then, well, I'm gonna leave. And I always said that they kind of made the decision for me. Back then I was really bad at like making my own decisions and like didn't really know where I wanted my life to go. So I'd always kind of manipulate situations so that other people made the decision and not me. That sounds super ridiculous now. I'm much better at decision making now and knowing what I want in my life and in my career, but that's the way it works. Finished that job on a Friday, Saturday morning, I was teaching yoga. I wasn't yet qualified as a teacher, but halfway through your course, you can get student yoga teacher insurance, which enables you to teach, I think it's one or two classes a week and that's what I was doing, and I was charging money for that. I was charging 10 pounds per person. Yeah, I was already starting to bring in money. And as we had this studio, I was renting it out to photographers, other yoga teachers, brands, I was doing it for events, all sorts of things. I always said that if you had a space in London, you could make some money out of it. So for that first year and a half, Rich and I lived and worked in that studio. We had a bedroom just off the studio, so it was literally like 24 seven. It was the hardest year and a half of my life. I've never worked harder, honestly. And it was really starting to take its toll on us, to be honest. And I also found it a good excuse for me not to audition at other yoga studios. I had a huge confidence problem. Like I was just so nervous speaking in front of people and going for auditions and putting myself out there that I didn't. I stayed teaching yoga in my house, which is obviously higher risk because you can earn nothing, but then you can earn a lot more per class than what a studio would pay you. But a year and a half in, Rich and I left the studio and we moved into this lovely flat. And I decided to audition at yoga studios. Now, I had a year and a half yoga teaching experience behind me, which made it really easy for me to get classes. And I'm so grateful for that. It was a really good confidence booster, I'm not gonna lie, because I was nervous as fuck. <laughs> so I got a lot of classes. I got too many classes, to be honest with you. I was teaching seven days a week, 
and I couldn't take it. It's not sustainable. My body was just crying out for rest. Even though I'm only 31, I mean, maybe if I was early 20s, I could have stuck it out for longer, but just couldn't do it. So I decided to really scale back, decided to do a similar thing again. I saved a lot of money and then I scaled back my studio classes and concentrated on private and corporate sessions as well as online stuff and event stuff because those things you get paid more per hour. That meant I could teach less but still earn the same amount, if not more. And I have earned more actually through that. Now I teach Monday to Friday. I sometimes do a Saturday or Sunday like if I feel like it or if I feel like I need the money, if I've got, wanna save something or I've got something coming up, I will teach Saturday or Sunday. But generally my Monday and Tuesday are my busiest, busiest days of the week and then it peters out towards Friday. And that is exactly how I wanted my working week to be. Like, I am so happy that nearly three years in, I'm in exactly the place that I wanna be. I still teach two public classes. One, because I think it's nice for when people ask, oh, where else can I practice with you? And you have some public classes that they could go to. Two, it's really good for making contacts. So like people that have come to my public classes, I've often found one-to-one -one private clients. They've um, got me into their work, so I've got corporate clients through that. And also building up your email list. I'll maybe do a whole other video on like marketing and digital marketing for yogis or whatever, but at the end of each class, I haven't been doing it of late. <laughs> I usually say, if you wanna keep in touch, if you want my playlist, my online videos, you wanna see my weekly schedule, give me your email address and I send out a weekly newsletter of like yogury things. So three years in, my focus now is to get more paid online stuff. So I've done quite a lot of paid online courses and videos and things like that. And I love doing it, honestly, like without being too big headed, I think I'm really good at it. And yeah, I really enjoy it. So that's what I'm like putting out there that I want to do. And I also do like the odd event stuff as well. So I've got like an event coming up. So that's me as a full-time yoga teacher. And I'll go through some of the tips that I learned along the way. So my first tip is save yourself a good hunk of money that you've got some backing behind you. So that even if you don't get any yoga gigs, you'll have some money to pay your rent on your bills and things. My second is really ask yourself, are you ready to work hard <laughs> because that first year to two years is going to be probably the hardest you've ever worked ever like genuinely and there's lots of things that crop up in self-employment that are just annoying like getting your tax done doing your own taxes i mean you have all these outgoings your insurance your website your email your spotify like all different things so yeah really like ask yourself how bad do you want it in initially my next is if you can get corporate classes and look after those corporate clients, do that because if you can get your corporates to book in for months, I have a corporate client that books in quarterly. You can get longevity out of your corporate clients by really looking after them. That can be a really, really good base rate for you. My next is make sure you price yourself in what you are happy to be paid at. So my one-to-one -one rate started off a bit lower, so it was 70 pounds per hour in the beginning and now I charge 85 pounds per hour. I also offer slight discounts if people wanna book more than like three. But as you get more experience, as you invest more money and more time into your training, you've gotta give yourself a pay rise, like you're self-employed. Like I think I'm a great employee of myself, so I deserve a little pay rise, so that's why I gave myself one. So make sure you price yourself on what you'd be happy to be paid, because if you're feeling like you're putting in a lot of time for not much reward, only you can fix that, no one else can fix that. So make sure you price yourself on what you would be happy to be paid out. Oh, a really good tip that my tutor at Yoga London said to me, have one full day off a week where there's no yoga. There's no teaching, there's no practicing, nothing. Honestly, that was like one of the best tips ever because you'll just keep your love for yoga. It won't feel like you're on this yoga treadmill of just, constant constant classes and practicing so yeah make sure you book yourself time off i think that's all the tips that i can think of for now make sure you check out those other videos down below because i think i have actually some more tips there actually if you have any questions at all leave them in the comments below and i'll do like a q a i think i'd be better at a q a rather than just like 
spilling loads of stuff out but i really hope you found this helpful if you did make sure you give it a little thumbs up thank you so much for watching good luck for all your yoga teaching endeavors and i'll see you on the next one bye guys